welcome back to the studio. Please excuse us for that. You know, these storms in this place, coupled with some signal dips, coupled with all the gremlins that we have from time to time, do make us go do those, uh, to those technical loops. Luckily for us, they are short and very few and far between lately. What I do want to show you is one of the crossings that we had today uh, at that cul-de-sac crossing where we saw all those, all those wildebeest uh, busy crossing. We're going to show Where those crocodiles got their food from. Now this afternoon we watched the crocodiles dismembering a small youngster and this is where they got it from. Just have a look at these wildebeest. It is so tension inducing. This is what I mean about them going across at these rocks. Watch there on the left hand side. On the left hand side, big crocodile grabbing one in the middle. Watch another one in the middle now. And you're going to see oh, a massive crocodile taking a full grown wildebeest. Oof. Wildebeest panicking, swimming across, left and right, zebra now going across. You can just have a look at this mass panic. Now, it is, it is hard to watch. You can see the dust on the outside. At the same time that this is happening, the Paradise Pride of Lion are actually hunting wildebeest uh, on the bank on the left-hand side. Now, we've got a bit of panic going on over here. You can see wildebeest struggling to get out, current washing some of them down. Now, a lot of these crocodiles have actually already got a wildebeest at this particular point. Watch this wildebeest crocodile coming in. Picking up speed, well, and, 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 oh, shame. It is so hard to watch. This is obviously just one of those things that happen here. It is, it, it, it's just one of those things that has to happen over here. It is a cycle of life here. Two crocodiles fighting over a youngster, then another crocodile coming in. This wildebeest actually looks like it's going to get away, and it did. How was that? Massive crocodile grabbing that wildebeest and then it got away and now we've got this little struggling one. One crocodile coming in now. Let's hope it just ends it quite quickly and there you go. You can see that it drags it underneath the water. Now you've got that hippo coming in. Big wound on its flank there. Do you see that? It is not uncommon for hippo to have those wounds. It is a slashing wound from a hippo's tusk. And there all those wildebeest are now out. On the bank, milling about. Oof, you can see there. Was, I think that there are a lot of very relieved wildebeest at that particular point. Those hippo coming back into the water, they didn't like the commotion. You can see them all standing over there, don't quite know what to do. Want to carry on sunbathing, don't want to carry on sunbathing. And, oh, there's that wildebeest that was still stuck. That was the wildebeest that got caught by that massive crocodile. Quite, oh, look at that, there's a massive crocodile stuck to the tail of that wildebeest. That is what happened. The wildebeest looked like it got out of the clutches of that crocodile was under the water for a little bit as that massive crocodile dived on top of it. Here's that little wildebeest off on the left hand side, he's still under the water. Thankfully with a big crocodile attached to it so it doesn't drown. Well it doesn't take a long time to drown I should say. Let's have a look at the saga of this wildebeest. Obviously exhausted, obviously terror induced, adrenaline pumped and now slippery on the rocks and with a giant crocodile attached to it. Just have a look at that. One of those Goliath crocodile that we watched um, tear apart that youngster today. This is not live, just for those of you who are joining the show at the moment. This is a replay from earlier on today. I can't remember what time. It must have been around about 11, 12 o'clock this afternoon. And um, while we're just waiting for all the technical gremlins to be sorted out, we thought that we'd play you some of the action from today. So this is a replay. My voice, however, is live. Just have a look at the size of that crocodile's head that is holding onto this wildebeest. Easily the same size, if not bigger, than this wildebeest. No wonder this wildebeest can't get down. It's anchored by a thousand pound dinosaur. Can't get its footing. You can see its lungs pumping there. It's a full grown male wildebeest, this. And they weigh in at about 500 pounds. Taking a bit of a breather, doesn't quite understand what, what is anchoring it there. And thankfully the crocodile is not wanting to let go of the tail. Being the villain in the story, of course, you want to try and make sure that uh, the good guy gets away. Let's see what's going to happen with this wildebeest. Quite often they just take their time. You can see the other crocodiles now coming in. Both, there's obviously two or three carcasses now in the water here. Oh, look at that. That's an epic struggle. That crocodile is going nowhere. Anchored onto the bottom of the water, easily weighing oh, upwards of a thousand pounds. Ah, 
A good question would be, does a wildebeest feel pain in its tail? I think yes. I mean, it obviously has bone all the way to the end there, and that it has a bit of the spine in it as well. Um, I think at this present moment, well, there we go, wildebeest has got out. Oh. A bit of a shaved tail at the moment. Oh, shame. <laughs> oh, can you imagine the relief flooding through that wildebeest? Just watched a whole bunch of its friends. Tail not damaged at all, but shorter than it was, and a whole bunch of zebra now. Isn't that absolutely amazing? And that was probably the best crossing that we had today. Isn't that incredible? All right. So I'm glad that I got to share that with you. And uh, from our side here in the Mara, at least, um, for now, for the scheduled broadcast, I'm going to be sending, well, I'm going to say goodbye, and then I'm going to send you over to Noel. But don't forget that we've got unscheduled broadcasts the whole night. We've got Taylor, Scott, and James out in the bush. But without further ado, goodbye for me, and off you go to Noel.